Hi, in this video we will be just going through a couple of useful commands for learning JDB. Uh, it will be helpful for our skill demo too. We have also added the link of these useful commands in the skill demo write up so you can also refer that. So here I have created an add.java class. So remember that this is a demo program and not directly related to your skill demo 2. We will be working on a different uh, program for the skill demo 2. Uh, so don't try to directly replicate this example. Okay, so the first step is basically compiling any program. So how do we compile a Java program? Is using the Java C command. Now, you can see that I added a hyphen G flag while compiling this. So the reason for that is you need this hyphen G flag to be able to access the local variables while you're debugging it. So uh, in order to access the locals, you need hyphen G flag while compiling the program. So it's successfully compiled. Now I will just run it and see if everything is working. Okay, so it's working and uh, I'm trying to add two variables a and b with values 5 and 6 and the output is 11 which is correct. So yeah, so this program is working correctly. Now we can still use JDB to learn how the program is working. So how do we type, how do we debug it? So let's to JDB and add. So when you go to JDB, uh, it just initializes and it does nothing beyond it. So you have to explicitly give commands on what do you want to do next. For example, if you're clueless and you don't know what to do next, you can just type help and you will get a list of useful commands. You don't need to remember this. Uh, you can always type help and get a list of these commands. And to exit the JDB, you can just type exit. Now I will explain some other useful commands. So the first command which I'll be explaining is how do you add a debug point. So to add a debug point, uh, we use the command stop add. And then let's say I want to add a debug point at line number 14. So we have to give the class name, which is add. And then we give colon and the line number where we want to add a debug point. So in this case, it's line number 14. Then let's run the debugger. As you can see that the debugger only ran till line number 14, which means it has not yet executed line number 14. So now let's uh, see how we can access the local variables uh, till this point. So we can do that by typing locals. So you can see there are method arguments. Uh, it's a empty list. And then we have some local variables, a, b, and the object. Okay, now let's look at the other command we want to learn. So the next command we'll be looking over is called step. So the step command only executes a single statement at a time. Uh, and then it goes to the beginning of the next statement. So let's see how step works. So we were at line 14 and this line was not yet executed. Uh, you can also verify it by checking the local variables. C has not been created yet. So you can just type step. And then, yeah, you can see that it just executed this line. And then let's check the local variables. Yeah. So here you can, you will be still confused. Like I still can't see the variable C. So what happens in step is it just runs the smallest step possible. So here the step which it ran is basically going to this addition function, which was line number three. And as you can see at line number three, the variables are X and Y, which are the function arguments. And there are no local variables yet. Now we can again try using the step command. So it, it ran this line. So we are expecting a local variable Z now to be added into a local. So let's check if that's the case. Yeah, so you can see that now Z has been added to the local variables. So this is how basically you use the step command. Next, we'll be looking at the where command. So to use the where command, you just type there. 
So the where command as described here, it just shows you the stack trace. So you can see in the current stack trace, we already ran the main function. We are already running the main function and then we are inside the addition function. The other command which we'll see is using up and down, basically moving up and down in this stack tree. So uh, you can see the addition is at the number one and main is at number two. So if you type the locals, you will be able to see the locals of this first one. So you're able to see the local variables of this addition function and we ran till this line uh, using step. So you're able to see till this point. Now let's say we want to go and see the variables of main. So what we can do is we have to go from one to two. So it's basically moving up in the stack. So we just type up. Now if you try and see the local variables, you'll be able to see the local variables of main, which is five, six and OB. So we, we, we have still not executed this complete line. So it still doesn't show C. And if you want to go back uh, to, to addition, you just type down by down because in the stack you are at two and you want to go back to one. So it's basically going down the stack. So just type down and do locals. Now you see you are again able to see the local variables of addition function. Okay, next we will see the suspend command. So let's type suspend. So what suspend does is basically it suspends all the threads. So if you type threads, you will be able to see what all threads were running. So for this uh, example, we're only interested in the main thread, basically the main function. So uh, I, I will not describe what the other threads are. The next command is thread uh, and then how do we go to a particular thread? Now, for example, as you see here, there are multiple threads which are running, but we are only interested in this one. And you can see here the ID of this thread, which is running the main function is one. So to go to thread one, you just type thread and the thread ID, which is one. So we were already at thread one. So you can also see main one, which says that we were already in thread one. Now the last command we'll be looking at is the continue. Uh, what it does is, is run, it runs uh, all the commands till the end of the program. So if you type continue, so it runs everything. So if you type locals now, sorry, we have suspended the thread. So I think we don't, we won't be able to see uh, the result. But yeah, the continue will run everything uh, till the end. I can just exit and show you a separate example of continue. So for example, let's stop at line number 11. So I'll do at colon 11. So if we do run, so we are at line number 11. Now if we type the continue, it just ran everything and then exited the application. That's all uh, that I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Thank you.